All right, good evening and welcome again to the first uh, Herndon Career Center informational session. This is for uh, predominantly sophomore and junior students and parents to get more information about what the Career Center has to offer. A lot of our recruitment activities this year have been limited just with COVID-19 and the limited um, availability of schools to allow for visitors and guests, as well as virtual uh, education as well. So I'm going to uh, share a presentation and we will go through um, the programs that we have to offer. Again, a lot of what we're looking at this year is uh, planning for next year. What would your juniors and seniors like to take? Just some general information about Herndon Career Center. We really do pride ourselves on being uh, a little bit like an early college experience. If you look at the Raytown Schools Career and Education Planning Guide, all of our programs are weighted half day programs. So a student will earn three credit hours for the year or one and a half credits a semester. Our programs are generally open to students in any one of our consortium districts. So if you're a resident of the Center, Grandview, Hickman Mills, Independence, Lee Summit, or Raytown School District, chances are you're eligible to attend some or all of our programs at the Career Center. All of our programs are half day programs. The morning session runs from 7.40 a.m. until 10.10 in the morning, and the p.m. session runs from 11.40 until two o'clock in the afternoon. The exception for this is cosmetology. It's a full day senior only program and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there. Transportation is routinely provided to and from each of our sending schools with regularity. So if transportation is a concern for you and your family, most of our programs, that's not gonna be something you have to worry about. And honestly, if it's a program a student's interested in, usually we find a way to make it work. All of our programs at Herndon Career Center lead to industry recognized credentials. This is a little bit different than our Southland CAPS programs, and I'll talk about those differences when we get to Southland CAPS. Our application process is open. We opened our application on November 1st, so if your student's interested, please have them go online and they can fill out the application now. The priority deadline is February 16th, 2021, so there's plenty of time, but it's not something we want to forget about. We'll kind of just jump right into our programs. Now I know there's a lot of information on the screen, uh, but I really felt like if this is going to be a video, if this is something that's going to be posted, uh, this is something to help, one, keep me on track, and two, to make sure that you have easy access to this moving forward. We have clustered all of our programs by uh, area. So we have a transportation and logistics cluster. We have a health and human services cluster. We have an industrial trades cluster, and we have a creative services cluster as well. So we'll start with our transportation and logistics programs with automotive collision. Automotive Collision is designed to be a junior year and senior year program, so a two-year program that will lead to industry-recognized certifications through the ICAR um, uh, modules. Students in their junior year will earn their ICAR Pro Level 1 Body Non-Structural Certification and their OSHA 10-hour card. Students in their senior year will be eligible to earn their ICAR Pro Level 1 Repair and Refinish Certification, as well as we're looking at adding some ICAR Welding Certifications as well. This is a very independent um, workforce first program currently. Students spend about 80% of their time in the shop working on their hands. And in a traditional school year, they'll spend about one day in the classroom working on these modules with the expectation that the rest would be homework throughout the school year. This program is eligible for 20 plus credit hours of articulated credit through Metropolitan Community College and the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. So that just kind of tells you the weight that these certifications carry. Um, this will get everybody, everything a student needs to go directly into workforce where they'll continue their training uh, with a employer. Realistically, uh, the instructor and I did some math last year uh, and obtaining these two certifications will save an employer over $5,000 in initial training costs. So it's a great jump start to a career. Our second program is Automotive Technology. This leads to an Automotive Service Excellence or ASE certification uh, the automobile entry level certification. These are 10 different tests that really cover comprehensive um, automotive technology. So they'll be doing uh, suspension, electrical, drivetrain, engines, brakes, tires, you name it, they're probably going to do it. As such, this program does lend itself to being a lot of book work, at least the first year. So it's designed to really provide basic service and maintenance instructions to students who really have no prior knowledge of the automobile industry, or maybe they don't even know how to change their own oil. Uh, we're gonna get them from nothing and help them entry, help them with entry level certification. 
So the first year, like I said, is a lot more book work with about 40% of the time spent in the lab and another 60% of the time spent in the classroom. Now, the reason we do this is that everything that gets done in the lab is going to directly reinforce the unit that we're learning in the book. Now, this is also designed to be a two-year program. So students, the second year of the program will spend a lot more time in the shop. They'll be working on customer vehicles. They'll be working on classroom projects um, and really getting more hands-on. So the second year, you're really looking more at about 80% in the shop, 70% in the shop, and that other 20 to 30% being spent in the classroom really to work on uh, certification. Our last program in this strand is a diesel industrial and agricultural equipment program. This one also uses an ASE certification, but this one focuses on medium and heavy truck entry level certification. So they're going to do some suspension, some air brakes, and then a lot more time is really going to be focused on what makes diesel machinery different. And that's the hydraulic and pneumatic systems that are common in these industry machines. Students will also need to have a lot more basic shop skills for this field. They'll do a lot more tapping and drilling and learning how to weld on steel machinery. Uh, we have a great industry partnership with this program through Custom Truck One Source. Last year, they actually hired 12 uh, interns from our school, and three of them I know today are still working there in full-time entry-level employment, even through the COVID closures and um, everything else that they've had to deal with. So uh, there's a lot of really great opportunities there. Diesel is one of those programs that can lend itself in two ways. Uh, a lot of students will enter entry-level employment and allow an employer to help pay to continue their training and education. But some of the larger brands like John Deere and Caterpillar, they do brand-specific training through post-secondary institutions like a community college in Nebraska has a program for John Deere. And then State Tech in Lynn, Missouri has a Caterpillar training program. And those are sponsored through the dealerships. And we've had students over the years who are really successful obtaining those those scholarships and those entry-level um, employment opportunities that will pay for their education. Moving on to our industrial technology programs, we have a construction trades program. This is kind of what you would consider your basic entry-level uh, construction class. Um, we follow the Carpenters Union curriculum. This uh, came out a couple years ago. It's called One Trade, Many Careers. And what I love about it myself as a school counselor is how comprehensive it is at really looking at the broad aspect of construction. Um, because people who say they are interested in construction really need to narrow that down a little bit more. So students will cover basic uh, entry level skills and shop skills, but they'll also learn some carpentry, some electrical, some plumbing, finishing, roofing. Um, you know, we'll have people who are interested in being glazers and working with glass. Um, we've had a lot of students kind of segue into the Millwright Union and learn some more machining. Um, and really, uh, it's, a, it's a broad curriculum and broad expectations. And our goal is to really help narrow down that student's focus. Uh, senior year of this program, we do a lot of industry visits through several local uh, skilled training centers and unions to really help students identify what it is they want to do and help them understand the next steps in achieving that career goal. Students will also earn an OSHA 10 hour safety card through this program, uh, which is just a good foot in the door and a leg up to show an employer that they've got the basic field safety to be employable. Our next program is our HVAC industrial maintenance program. Uh, this program follows the North American Technician Alliance Excellence Certification. Our goal for this program is that students will learn, earn both their level one, which is their entry level uh, employment, and their level two, which is their HVAC uh, support technician license. We also hope that students through this program will be able to earn and eligible to earn their section 608 license. This is for commercial refrigerant handling, as well as all students earning an OSHA 10 hour safety card through this program. So a lot of units in this program are gonna cover more of that end of the construction industry. So they'll do a lot of soldering and brazing pipe. They'll do sheet metal work. They'll do some electrical. They'll learn about HVACR uh, and programmable logic controllers, things of that nature, um, really to try to get them uh, a leg up if they're interested in working in HVAC. Uh, maybe they're interested in working as um, a technician even who, who services field generators and things of that nature. Um, we'll help them get to that, that career goal. Uh, pipe fitters is a common one as well through this program. Our last program in this strand is our welding and metal fabrication program. This program follows the American Welding Society SENSE curriculum, uh, which is sponsored by the American Welding Society. And our goal is also that our second year students will earn their D11 structural steel certification. This really gives everything they need to go into industry and get further training. 
We've had a lot of success with students in this program recently. It's arguably our most workforce first program on campus and our most hands-on with students typically spending 90% of their time in the shop and only 10% of their time in the classroom learning about um, welding codes, learning about um, reading blueprints and diagrams, learning the terminology used in welding. And of course, we start every year learning how to do uh, safe machine operations. And students will also earn their OSHA 10 hour card here. Just to give some uh, anecdotal uh, feedback about some student successes in these programs. Uh, we had a student leave the construction technology program last year um, and enter straight into the Millwright Union. He's currently making about um, 25 or $26 an hour um, as a millwright. Uh, we've had a lot of students who've entered this um, and started their own business. Uh, there's a Royal Garage Door Company, which is actually a company that was founded and started by a Herndon uh, graduate. Um, our HVAC industrial maintenance program, we had a student leave this program last year who's a Lee Summit School District resident. Um, and he was hired straight into the maintenance department with the Lee Summit School District, which is a great way to start your career uh, full time. Our welding and metal fabrication story, um, I really go two years back for this one. Uh, we had a student from Lee Summit West um, and a couple students from Lee Summit High School who were all hired directly out of this program to join uh, the Boilermaker Training Center and the Boilermaker Union. Last I checked, one of them was in Michigan, a couple of them were still in Pennsylvania, and because they were doing field work, they were actually 19 years old and earning about $40 an hour field rate, plus a per diem of $100 a day for living expenses while they're traveling for work. And I don't know about uh, a lot of you, but but that's a good living for, for a family. So um, the industrial trades are really a lucrative career opportunity for the right student, and especially for those hands-on learners. Moving on to our creative services strand of programs, uh, we'll start with cosmetology. As I mentioned at the beginning, cosmetology is a full day senior only program. Uh, and this is actually because of the clinical hours and book instruction required to earn licensure through the state board. To be a licensed cosmetologist in the state of Missouri, you need 1,220 hours of training. Uh, we do this by having students come to us Monday and Friday from 740 until 215. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, students are with us from 7.15 until 4.15 in the afternoon. This will typically get students all of their hours completed by the middle of April, and then they'll be eligible to sit for the State Board of Cosmetology exam and uh, will be fully licensed after they pass that course. Um, we pride ourselves in an extremely high pass rate, um, and it's something that our instructor really has a goal of making sure that every student's adequately prepared to take that examination. If any of you know anything about cosmetology, you know that cosmetology school can be really expensive in the, in the private sector. So this is an opportunity for the right students to take a, a class and save themselves about $17,000 in skilled training. Now, one thing that this means for students who are considering this field is that they have to meet all of their graduation requirements by the end of their junior year. The exception to this requirement is English 4, it's just a graduation requirement that all students have four credits of English. So that's something that over the last couple of years, we've really worked hard to onboard. And now all of our cosmetology students have English four as an option to take um, on campus with us. So students in cosmetology will also earn a Milady Rise certification. And right now it bears mentioning that we're also doing barbicide certifications for COVID and for general sanitation uh, practices. And so these are just, uh, certifications for students to put in their back pocket as they look to enter industry. The other thing I'd mention on this is cosmetology is just not about doing hair. Students will learn a lot about skin disorders, diseases, funguses of, of the fingers um, and hair and scalp. Um, so there's a little bit of anatomy and physiology that goes into it as well. Um, students will learn about pedicures and manicures. Uh, they'll learn to do facials. Um, and in a normal school year, we're actually open to the public as well. So we have walk-in clients that they will have to work on their customer service skills and planning. Uh, we do a big business planning unit every year where students look at the operation costs to run a salon as well. So it's really a pretty comprehensive program when you think about cosmetology. Our next program in this cluster is the advertising and graphic design program. We just are in the process of switching to being an Adobe certified associate program meaning that we're gonna focus on getting students the Adobe Certified Associate credential. This means that they will have to pass an industry recognized exam with Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, and Adobe Photoshop. 
This program is eligible for six articulated credits through Metropolitan Community College. And we really hope that students coming into this class have a strong foundation in art and computer applications. Um, this is really an interesting fusion of program as it really blends business and art uh, skills into kind of a cohesive uh, thought. The other thing I'll mention about this program is we really pride ourselves on our industry partnerships and relationships. If anybody's familiar with the Kansas City Comets, uh, they're a professional indoor soccer team that plays out of the Cable Dahmer Arena now. Um, and we do all of their promotional and marketing materials. We also have business partnerships with several other entities, including the radio station 103 Jams. Uh, we do some of their work as well. So it's a really good chance for students to learn about the career path of being a graphic designer. Uh, it's also a program that I recommend regularly to students who are interested in uh, photography because most photographers have to do their own touch up with Photoshop. Or even if you're interested in journalism, this is gonna give you some of those art skills and the design skills necessary to really look more comprehensively at layout and design that you might find in like a magazine or on a website. Our last program in this cluster is Culinary Arts. Uh, Culinary Arts follows the ProStar curriculum. This curriculum is published by the National Restaurant Association. Our goal for this is that students will complete their level one in their junior year, level two in their senior year, and they'll get their certificate of recognition in, on their senior year as well, which really shows that they have both industry experience and training and education um, to satisfy uh, that recognition. Uh, that recognition is actually a good foot in the door for students who are looking to go directly into industry. Uh, our chef, Mike Krastowski, has some great business relationships in the community. And students who finish that COA, he typically can uh, find a way to place. Students will also earn their ServeSafe Manager certification through this program. And this program will get articulated credit to Johnson & Wales, Sullivan University, or Johnson County Community College if they choose to pursue post-secondary education after uh, their training which right now most do. Um, those of you who are a little more familiar with our program may know that Herndon Career Center and our culinary arts program has actually won um, the Missouri State Pro Start competition several years in a row. And uh, three years ago, we were the Pro Start national champions. Two years ago, we were the Pro Star runner up, so second place. And last year, unfortunately, they canceled the national competition. Um, so we weren't uh, able to compete. Uh, I say that just to, to let you know that culinary arts is a great program, but it's not necessarily a class if somebody just wants to learn how to make cupcakes and cookies. Uh, this is a class to train the next level of restaurateurs, um, people who are interested in pastry, certainly, um, but also restaurant managers, uh, chefs, and uh, people who are really looking towards this industry as a career, because it's a great opportunity for them to learn. Sorry, I needed just a little drink of water there. Um, our next program cluster is Health and Human Services. And we'll start with our Foundations of Nursing program. This program will lead itself uh, to a certified nursing ass assistant certification. Now, if there's one thing we know about healthcare is that there's been a lot of vertical um, educational movement in this field over the last 10 years. So an RN now does what an LPN did a decade ago and LPN now does what a CNA may have done a decade ago. And so it seems like the education and training necessary just keeps going up and up. Um, I mentioned that because the biggest thing that we hang our hat on in this program is that, that this is a great introductory skill for students to learn. It's great for the student who needs to uh, work while they go through school, uh, which anymore with the rising cost of post-secondary training is nearly everybody. Um, and 95% of our students go on to pursue a post-secondary education in healthcare. This is a great kind of try it before you buy it program because students are gonna get over hundred hours of clinical based uh, experiences in the community. Historically, we've partnered with uh, John Knox Village and Lee Summit and Jackson Creek Memory Care and Independence. They've been great partners. This year obviously has been uh, a little different um, just with the risk of COVID exposure to both students and um, clientele at these facilities. We've had to scale back um, our community involvement, uh, but that is something that we definitely are continuing those relationships and continuing discussions to, to explore the safety of those community-based experiences because they really are so important for students going into this career field. Our next program is our emergency medical technician program. 
Uh, this is a one-year program. We've kept this program as senior only. A couple of years ago, you had to be 18 to sit for the NREMTB test. They since changed that, but we really feel that the training and education needed requires a more mature student. Um, and the certification really, you can't use it in the workforce until you're 18 anyway. So we've kept it as a senior only program, but really students are gonna get all the training necessary to address any type of trauma. Um, so that you can imagine if we're really looking at that as our goal, that the curriculum is pretty extensive because we need to make sure that students leaving our program have the skills necessary to deal with a stroke, to deal with a neck injury at a sporting event, to deal with a uh, car crash like lacerations, um, you name it, uh, an EMT pretty much has to be there to help uh, bridge that gap from accident to hospital setting for more long-term care. This is definitely a program that we recommend for anybody interested in being a firefighter or a paramedic. In fact, right now, if you have your NREMTB license, it'll actually waive the first five credit hours of your paramedic license with Metropolitan Community College uh, because that's the first class you have to take when you go post-secondary in this field. And to be a firefighter anywhere in Jackson County and really anywhere in the state at this point, uh, you have to be an EMT first. Uh, so there, this will really help a student get their foot in the door um, if that is their career goal. We're actually uh, continuing to explore and develop a relationship with the Kansas City Fire Department. And so if you have a Kansas City address, this would be a great program for you uh, to explore that opportunity as well. One new program that we're looking at adding next year, um, and it's so new that it's a little bit harder for me to describe and explain, is our Intro to Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine program. One thing we've noticed over the last several years is a continued increase in interest and applications for our health-related fields. We have attempted to expand our Foundations of Nursing program, but it's really challenging to find another instructor. So we thought we'd go in a little bit of a different route. And so we're adding this program for students who are interested more in um, sports medicine, uh, recognizing um, injuries, uh, understanding rehabilitation, nutrition, weight loss, um, knowing about body mechanics and uh, muscle movement. Um, so we're really looking at anatomy and physiology as being kind of a core class to help prepare a student for this um, with some chemistry and psychology and other um, courses being important. Uh, we're gonna get to the industry recognized credential for this program by doing an OSHA 10 hour card in healthcare and doing CPR and first aid certifications as well. Uh, this is a program that really we're going to help students navigate their post-secondary options while getting them some shadowing perhaps with a physical therapy assistant or maybe getting them some time with an athletic trainer at some sporting events um, in the community as well. So this is something we're really excited to bring on board next year, um, assuming we get the student interest and can find a qualified instructor. Um, so if you know a student who's interested, please encourage them to apply. Our last program in our health and human services field is our law enforcement enforcement and police science program. Uh, this program follows the Missouri Law Enforcement Skill and Knowledge Certification. This is a certification sponsored and endorsed by the Missouri Highway Patrol. Uh, it's really just a good introduction to law enforcement as a career field. So while we focus on what it's like to be a highway patrol officer or a police officer, we'll also look at different career opportunities in security, in corrections, in first responder dispatch, in juvenile justice. We always have a handful of students who are actually really interested in criminal law as a, a field of study. And so they'll come in just to understand more about what policing looks like. And it's a great way for them to learn before they go to school and pick a major uh, at the secondary level. We also do a lot of hands-on learning. We do some use of force simulation. Uh, we'll do some uh, mock uh, traffic stops. We'll do some accident diagram and reporting. A couple of years ago, even we, we staged uh, an accident using some of our wrecked vehicles from automotive collision. Um, and then the students had to go out and diagram it. So that's always a really cool one. Uh, there's some optional physical training that we've added just so students are aware of the physical requirements to uh, enter the police academy. Um, but again, that's something that's being done as an optional opt-in um, basis. And then, of course, uh, I always have to mention that we do cover some crime scene investigation. It seems to be what a lot of students are interested in. Um, you can thank television for that one probably. Uh, but it really is. Forensic science is a huge field. Um, and I can understand why students find it so interesting. Uh, we also really look at career planning as a key component of this class because you can really bridge 
high school to the police academy in a number of ways. To be a police officer in the state of Missouri, you have to be 21 years old. So we really look at a career first plan where students maybe do some security or uh, other things. We look at a military plan or we look at a college plan. So now we're going into our Southland Center for Advanced Professional Studies or our CAPS programs. Now CAPS is different uh, because these courses do not have identified prerequisites and they don't necessarily lead to an industry recognized credential. Now that doesn't mean there aren't opportunities to earn credentials through them, but this curriculum is really driven more uh, by uh, the students learning objectives and our industry partnerships. Uh, I will note on the onset of this, not all of our schools are currently partnering with Southland CAPS. So if there's a program here that interests you, make sure that you or your student reach out to the school and see if this is something that you participate in. As I said, um, these programs are exploratory, uh, but please do understand that the advanced professional studies is there for a reason. So while we don't have prerequisites, while these are exploratory, there is still a certain level of academic rigor to all of these classes, and all of these classes are eligible for dual credit through Northwest Missouri State University. Uh, the big difference for these is that all of these programs are also our off-site programs, and so that means transportation needs to be provided by the student or family, as really the course location may vary. Um, all of our programs kind of have a home base. Uh, and I'll talk more about that as we go through the programs, but it's also subject to change based on what the student's doing. Our goal for every student in these programs is that they have an industry-based internship during their second semester. So the first semester, we really focus and hone in on professionalism skills, punctuality, uh, learning to ask critical questions, um, and then really start to focus on where their interest lies in any of these programs. And then we'll help to find them a place um, to land for their internship. Again, for these programs, the priority deadline is February 16th of 2021, and you can apply on the Southland CAPS website. Our first program in the Southland CAPS uh, network is our animal health science program. Currently, this uh, program is meeting at the Kansas City Zoo, uh, but we also have several community projects throughout the KC Metro. Uh, we've done projects uh, out at um, Bayer, in uh, Kansas. Um, we spend a lot of time at Wayside Waves. We've gone to KC Pet Project. Um, we do some conservation work uh, with um, the conservation department. Uh, they'll take tours to uh, different large and small uh, veterinary facilities. So this is really an introduction to the animal health science as a career field. Um, and really typical student interests are uh, conservation, uh, veterinary science, obviously. Um, we always have students who are interested in zoology, uh, marine biology, We've had a handful of students who are really interested in equestrian science, and we've been able to place them at some stables. Um, and then agricultural and animal science, um, we've had students who are really interested in um, cattle health, uh, for example, um, cow health. And so we've helped foster uh, and find some business partnerships for them to expand their knowledge there. Um, but most of our students really come in with an interest in, in veterinary science. And a lot of what we do is try to expand their knowledge and expand their understanding of, of different aspects of the career and of this industry um, to really help them navigate and define their own career pathway. Our second program is turf management and horticulture. This program also currently meets at the Kansas City Zoo. Um, we're looking at continuing to develop uh, community projects throughout the metro as well. Um, I know they've gone out to some commercial turf grass farms. Uh, they've worked with some uh, landscaping companies as well. Um, so this is a good way for students to learn about commercial turf grass, um, including like if they're interested in uh, like PGA tour level quality uh, commercial turf, like you'd see at a golf course or um, sporting events as well. Um, but we're also bridging more into horticulture uh, into greenhouse operations, et cetera. Um, so students might come in with an interest in commercial turf grass, landscape design, botany, horticulture, uh, vertical farming or urban agriculture, aquaponics, hydroponics, soil science, et cetera. Um, really this program, it's in its infancy. This is the first year we've had it. Um, and so I'm really excited to see uh, how this one blossoms, um, pun intended on that one. Um, 
and uh, we're hoping that we can continue to get an increased interest there uh, as this field continues to evolve. Um, but it's commercial turf grass is big business. Um, and so that's a program we're really excited to continue to grow and expand. Uh, we also have an education exploration program. Uh, this replaced our early childhood development program uh, a couple of years ago uh, because um, this is more encapsulating of education as an industry. Um, it currently is meeting at Spring Valley Elementary in Raytown. Uh, so students who are entering this program really should be expressing interest in some type of education. Um, nobody yet has told me that they really want to be a school counselor. Um, I'm a little shocked by that. My job is great. Um, but a lot of uh, students want to be teachers. Um, obviously, we've had some students come in who want to be school psychologists, uh, speech language pathologists. Um, and so we'll really kind of help them navigate what their career trajectory could look like. Uh, we'll still do some focus on early childhood education if that's a student interest. Uh, for example, a couple of years ago, we placed a student on internship with a Montessori preschool uh, because they were really interested in the Montessori uh, curriculum and, and structure of education. So uh, we'll really look a lot at curriculum development, uh, classroom management, um, and obviously a lot of post-secondary planning goes into this as well. Uh, because students who want to enter education will need at least a bachelor's degree. And anymore, really, most teachers tend to have a master's degree or higher. We'll rotate throughout the year. Um, students will have hands-on experiences to observe um, diverse grade levels, uh, content areas, and school settings. So a uh, really good opportunity for students interested in education. Uh, our business innovation and uh, creation program is also new this year. Um, it's currently meeting at Herndon Career Center. Uh, we're beginning to look at some offsite locations for next year. Um, we've done a lot uh, with the High V Arena down in uh, the West Bottoms um, with business partnerships. Um, we've done a lot of different virtual industry tours uh, through different um, types of business uh, from gyms uh, to uh, e-commerce stores. Um, and uh, just kind of startups um, and startup companies that specialize in helping other businesses start up. Uh, so we really look at helping a student broaden their understanding of entrepreneurship, patent development, marketing, and just general economic development. Uh, our goal is really to get students an opportunity to creatively solve problems uh, for new existing or expanding market issues. So, so our goal for a capstone project in this class would be for them to identify a specific issue in an industry that they've seen and then come up with a creative problem or a creative solution to that problem. We have two other programs. Uh, we have our technology solutions program. Uh, currently, we only have second year students in this class. Um, and they are on offsite internships this semester. Um, but this program was meeting at Herndon Career Center. Uh, enrollment will drive uh, this program and its location for next year. Uh, but this program is really looking at those students who are interested in technology, but really haven't quite uh, narrowed down their focus on what they want to pursue. We know great programs already exist for a student who absolutely wants to be a computer programmer. Um, those programs are already there. But there's big opportunities for networking, software development, hardware repair, website design, database management, and the list goes on and on. Um, you know, technology changes so fast. Uh, we've had students interested in app development for phones, uh, things like that. And so this is a great way for a student to enter a program and really help narrow their focus before they enter uh, college programming. And the goal really is to help them um, solidify a focus so they can uh, pursue that wholeheartedly. Uh, the last program that we're onboarding next year, and this one currently is only available to Raytown, Raytown students for 2020 and 2021, is we're looking at an aviation maintenance program. Uh, this is actually in partnership with the Aviation Maintenance Institute. Uh, completion of this program and students will receive 19 articulated credit hours for Aviation General Science, Aviation General Science II, Aviation General Science three and Aviation General Science four. Um, so these 19 credit hours are really designed to help students bridge a gap from high school 
And the goal is really for students to matriculate into the Aviation Maintenance Institute for post-secondary, where they can become a certified mechanic and get placed at um, an airport, a large commercial airport um, for their career after two years of continued training. Uh, this also helps greatly reduce the costs of that program. Uh, again, this is something that is um, just kind of taking off. And so we're looking forward to uh, see where this goes and how this program unfolds over the next couple of years. Uh, but a great opportunity. Um, the aviation market obviously right now is a little bit down. Um, but if you ask me, I think that's just going to lead to a lot of increased opportunities for students. Uh, I've been hearing for several years that the age and demographics of, of airplane mechanics has um, gone up and up and there aren't as many people entering the workforce for training. Um, and so I think when airlines kind of start to take off again, um, that you're going to see a really large gap uh, in the skilled trades. So uh, this is a great opportunity for students to kind of get in um, on the ground level there. Uh, great benefits for students. Um, all of our programs do meet student graduation requirements. Uh, typically all of our classes are slated for articulated or are slated for practical art credit. Um, but we do have a few waivers. If a student's short on math science, um, that's something to talk with their counselor about. Some of our programs may qualify for a waiver um, for one of those core classes. Uh, a lot of our programs, even if I didn't mention it today, do qualify for dual or articulated college credit. I mentioned some of the more common ones that get used, um, but we certainly have other opportunities available. Uh, we do a lot of industry partnerships uh, and industry preparation uh, with businesses. Um, we have a lot of internship opportunities, not just for our CAPS programs where we really focus on that internship, but for our Herndon programs too. If a student comes to us with an opportunity in industry for them to get some hands-on training and experience, we will find a way to help them bridge their education into a training opportunity uh, for that employer. We like to consider everything we do hands-on, minds-on learning. Uh, so a lot of hands-on activities, it's not going to be just in the book, you're going to be in the shop getting dirty. Um, and uh, sweaty a lot of the time. Uh, doesn't even really matter which program you're in, that's probably the case. Uh, there's also chances for students to participate in organizations such as Skills USA, Pro Start, National Technical Honor Society, and we do our own student ambassadors as well. This is a great opportunity as well for students to meet um, others across the metropolitan area with some shared interests. Um, you know, they might be one of a few students in their school who are really interested in diesel machinery. We'll come take a class with 20 other students who all kind of have that interest or passion. Um, and again, we're always looking um, for partnerships with local businesses and organizations. And really we're always looking at expanding our own network of partners. So since this video is gonna be posted at some point, if that's you, please reach out. Uh, we'd love to find a way to partner with you. So what does the application process look like? Uh, we look at all of our applications just like uh, we would um, an assignment. So they are looked at on a rubric. Uh, we have several short answer questions on the application. Um, they are graded for grammar and punctuation. Uh, students are allowed to select their top two program choices on there. Um, this is mostly um, uh, important for our more competitive programs. Over the last several years, um, our foundations of nursing, cosmetology, law enforcement, and welding programs have been the most competitive, um, but a lot of our program over the years have been filling up. Um, I know when I started uh, three years ago, uh, we had a total of enrollment of about 350 students. Uh, this year, we were slated to start the year with closer to 600. So uh, we've seen a, a really drastic uh, growth in interest for our programs, which is fantastic. But it does mean that students should make sure they get their application in on time and make sure that they're really optimizing those two programs if they've got multiple interests. Um, we do look uh, at base GPA. Um, our minimum GPA that we look at is a 2.0 GPA. You get some additional points on your application when you have a 2.5, 2.75, et cetera. Uh, and we really look at 90% um, being the minimum attendance and you get extra points for having good attendance on that application. Now, I will say just as that kind of COVID-19 caveat right now, uh, we know as a career center that we are probably gonna have to make a lot of um, concessions next year. We're gonna be taking a lot of students on exception for either grade point average or attendance. 
um, because virtual learning has not been uh, a fantastic experience for everyone. So if, if your student falls under that boat, please encourage them to apply. We know that we're gonna get a broad variety of candidates this next year, and we're gonna look at everybody equally. I will say if your student doesn't have that GPA or the attendance, the focus needs to be on those short answer questions and really letting us know why this program is so important for them. Uh, I would like to say uh, this picture here on, on the side, uh, that is our new culinary training facility. Um, this is actually a picture I took this morning uh, rolling into the parking lot. It was a beautiful sunrise this morning before we had the ice rain. Um, and uh, so we're really proud to, to have the, this facility to train our new culinary students in uh, this year. So uh, this was our first informational session. Um, the December 7th session and the February 3rd sessions will be very similar to this, um, but we are planning some teacher informational panels. These will be 2.30 p.m. I know that's not an optimal time for everybody. So like this, they will be recorded and then they'll be shared um, on our website. So December 9th, we'll have our creative programs and those instructors will actually be on that call. We'll do like a round table discussion. I'll have a few um, planned questions that they will each answer. And then we'll kind of throw questions out to the audience. We'll collect a few uh, and then we will get those answered as well. So that's December 9th, we'll do our creative services programs. December 16th will be our Southland CAPS programs. January 6th, we'll do health and human services. January 13th, we'll do transportation. And then January 20th, still in plenty of time to apply for a program, uh, will be our industrial uh, programs. You can find more information on our website, uh, just raytownschools.org backslash Herndon will take you there. You can find some more program specific information by hovering over programs and going to the clicking on that and going to your program of choice. We've also just added this videos tab. This is where a lot of content like this will be found in the future. We're planning to get a virtual tour set up there as well. Um, so look there for some ongoing updates. And similar with our Southland CAPS website, um, you can find more information on our courses there. And our enrollment tab is where you'll apply. And uh, if you have any questions that you didn't get answered in this Zoom, or if you're watching this as a recording, please do reach out to me. I love answering questions and talking to the community about how our programs can help jumpstart a student's career. So my email is nate.zier at raytownschools.org, and I would love to hear from you. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing now. Uh, that is a lot of me talking. I hope that some of you have asked questions. Um, I'm also going to stop recording now um, and so we can focus on some more of those specific questions. So thank you all for joining us.